Taking the minimum to the max. San Francisco just became the first place in the country to hike the minimum wage over 10 bucks an hour. And eight more states are getting ready to hike theirs as well. Sounds good, but Kim, you say eliminating the minimum wage will help wages. How? Yeah, no disrespect to Teddy Roosevelt, who started this whole minimum wage thing so many years ago. But I do believe that eliminating the minimum wage will help increase wages in the long run. I mean, think about it this way. I was talking to former chairman um, of AOL, Steve Case, who's now the CEO of a company called Revolution, which helps startups. And he was saying that new starts across the country are down 23 percent because it's just too expensive to start a business and even operate a business right here in, in the United States. So let's say you allow companies to actually hire people for what they can afford that will help them to remain profitable. It'll allow them to grow. And when they grow, they're going to hire more and they're going to pay more. Interesting. So, Rick, eliminating the minimum wage might actually help hike wages in the long run. You know, we're, we're getting to a point where small children are going to stop brushing their teeth and cleaning their rooms because it's going to be bad for job growth and, and, and wages. We can't use this as an excuse for everything. I'll tell you what. The unskilled workers in this country will not suffer a wage decrease by giving them a larger minimum wage. But you know what they will do? They'll have more money in their pocket to spend. They'll become customers, and customers create jobs. But, Rich, a lot of small employers are saying, hey, if, if my minimum wage goes up, I'm not going to be hiring more people because I can't afford them. Well, it depends on uh, the uh, background of economic growth. In my home state of North Dakota, there is an oil boom. It's called the Bakken Reserve. And in a town called Williston, a McDonald's franchise is paying $20 an hour for counter help, three times apply? the minimum wage, because there is economic growth. So right. you've got to concentrate on economic growth. The wage situation will take care of itself. We don't need a minimum wage. Right. We need economic growth policies. Morgan, do we need a minimum wage or not? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to have to remind everybody here that a minimum wage was put in place to squelch sweatshop labor. So, yes, I do think we need to have a minimum wage in place. I think in some areas, maybe, yes, we should even increase the minimum wage. And he here's the reason. So much of the academic data on minimum wages is inconclusive. There's so many different reports that say so many different things. What we do know is that the poverty rate is up to 15 percent and that household income is down 7 percent over the last decade. And what we do know is that the cost of living has risen. We just talked about this last week on the show. So, yes, I do think we need to raise the minimum wage. As Rick mentioned, it puts more money in the hands of potential consumers who can spend and boost GDP. All right, Victoria, I was talking no, Morgan, about I some, totally, I was talking totally about some employers that are having trouble hiring at <laughs> higher minimum wages. You've got an anecdote of your own. Go ahead. Well, yeah, San Francisco, which you mentioned at the top, is a unique place. Um, and I know several small business owners in this city. And the city right now is actually booming. I mean, startups are popping up on a daily basis downtown. Rents are high. Uh, it's hard to get a reservation on a, at a restaurant on a Tuesday night. But you talk to restaurant owners, you talk to salon owners, and they're feeling the pinch. I mean, they, their business is good, but it's hard for them to make a profit. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, they're not growing. I have a friend who's not going to expand her salon downtown because she's facing such high costs from not only the high minimum wage in San Francisco but we also have all these health care regulations that just add on to her cost and that means jobs that aren't going to be created so yes workers are getting higher wages here but we're also facing nine percent unemployment that doesn't make any sense but it's all but guaranteed guys it's a higher all... unemployment rate than the, okay. than the nation okay ahead, but it's Dan. all but guaranteed guys that among certain weakened businesses that are on that brink between you know uh, solvency and insolvency that when you raise their instantly raise their base cost for labor and they weren't ready for it and they didn't need to otherwise some of them will end up laying off some people even though we meant to help workers the problem with the minimum wage is it hurts the people we mean to help most and that is the youngest people entering their workforce there are fewer jobs for them to enter someone just talked about morgan said that you know we've lost seven percent in wages over the past decade our wages keep going down in real terms over decades guys our minimum wage keeps going up is it helping no it's yeah. not helping and morgan, at all. the people that are hurt most by unemployment are the young people the the ones who are least likely to get hired if you jack up the minimum wage oh, right completely it's young people and it's actually also women that tend to tend to work the most at the minimum so wage so why are you still for raising the minimum wage in. Well, you know what, we're, we're talking about minimum wage, but, but one of the things that, like Rich mentioned, economic growth. Let's talk about reforming corporate tax rates. Let's talk about things like Obamacare and health care regulations like Victoria just mentioned. And then we can sit down and look at minimum, rate, minimum wage and see whether we really need it or not. Rick Unger, go ahead. 
Well, I just want to say Morgan's my hero. And beyond <laughs> that, let's keep in mind, it's the Christmas season. Let's have a heart, people. What about that, Kim? Uh, is a yeah, lot of people will look at you and say it's it's no. heartless to, to want to cut the Kim minimum wage. Hold on, Kim. No, go I, ahead. I think that the, the, the numbers like, actually speak for themselves. If you look at the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics numbers, more than 73 million um, people here in the United States actually make an hourly wage, but only 1.8 million of which, 1.8 million of which, out of 73 million Amer um, people that are on uh, making an hourly wage. They, they actually make minimum. So only 1.8 million people actually make minimum wage. And exactly. there's 2.5 million people of which who actually make less than minimum wage, well, they're illegal. And they don't stay on minimum wage for longer than a year or two. You know, so no, they don't. Rick as just long said, as the guys, allows the let me in to here. Grow. Rick just said, you know, let's have a heart. It's the holiday season. I'm sick and tired <laughs> of liberals deciding that because we want good economic fixes, we don't have a heart. Let's have a heart and not raise the minimum wage and put some people out of work at the holiday season. Yes, exactly. Yes. Well, Rich, isn't, isn't the biggest That's heart the one that comment. wants the most number of people to have a job, right? It's better to have a job than, than not have a job at all. Yeah, I would say the people with the biggest heart are employers because they're putting their capital, their time, their energy, their reputation at risk, and, and government agencies can come out of nowhere and tear them down. You know, just remember, an employer doesn't have to hire anybody. At the margin, they don't have right. to hire. Maybe this administration would like to force them to hire, but they don't have to hire. So if you raise their okay. costs... They're not going to hire as many people. Last word from Rich. Thank you, gang. Coming up next, first text.